Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that is given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that this is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that we might live. Let's open up to, uh, uh, where we leave off last week? We're talking about Balaam, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're talking about Balaam. We left off Numbers 24. That was, that was the end of Balaam's prophecy. All right? And then we, we learned right after that, Numbers 25, we, we don't have to go to it, but in Numbers 25, we had seen that, that uh, with the Balaam's uh, council, all our people started to, to sleep with other women. All right? They started to sleep with women of uh, Moab. And after they slept with these women, they started to worship their gods right in front of the Most High God. Balaam told him, he was like, man, listen. You, uh, you, you know what I'm saying? You let your women fraternize with them? Let me tell you something. They'll mess with them. And once they mess with them, they'll worship their God just to get it. All right? So we failed doing that. What do you think the Most High God did? We ain't got to get it, but the Most High died. He went, he went out there. He, uh, he started slaying our people. All our people died. You know what I'm saying? That thing ended because, who was it? Phineas? Eliezer? Phineas. Phineas. Phineas put a, what did he put a, he put a, uh, javelin. It? Javelin. Right through the, right through the heart of a woman. All right? I ain't right, put a, a, a javelin right through a woman, right? And he had to kill the men, right? So that was that was just about the last of our people that died. Remember, we talked about we was gonna spend forty years in the wilderness. You know what I'm saying? All the people are gonna die off according to the book. That's like the last of the people that died. A little bit after that, we start counting our people again, right? We start counting our people again. So we gave like a second count. I think that's about like like uh, numbers maybe twenty something, maybe maybe thirty one or something. But uh, you know what I'm saying? We started now thirty one. Maybe 32 or something. I don't know. But we start counting our people again. And once we counted them again, we said, everybody 20 or older at this point, we're going to go. Because remember, we counted them originally. We wanted to go to war. Then we found out everybody 20 and up wasn't going to go. So they had to wait until 40 years, and they all died off. And after they die off, we count the whoever's 20 and up again. You know what I'm saying? That's not including the people. The book say it was not including the people that was counted before. All right? So at this time, we go in. We're about to go into the land. We already talked about it. We was near Jordan. Right, or near the Jordan River, and we was about to go across and go back into Israel. Right, but at this time, uh, Moses, uh, you know what I'm saying? He, 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 that's how you get into Deuteronomy. He started to, he started to go into the other commandments and, and, and kind of rehash everything for the newer generation. You know what I'm saying? For the young ones that's able to go in. For the young ones, yeah. Let's, let's, we haven't, we haven't spent a lot of time on commandments lately, so let's go into the commandments because before we go into Deuteronomy, it's a few things we need to wrap up in numbers, but before we go into Deuteronomy, you know what I'm saying, I want to make sure that we actually look at some of the commandments and then we're going to go over them again in Deuteronomy where he talk about a, a whole host of the commandments. So let's, uh, let's look at uh, Leviticus 18. It's Leviticus 18. We're going to do chapter 1. They just trying to understand the commandments, understand the book. This is this is where a lot of our people go wrong. We, you know, what I'm saying, especially when we learn we Hebrews, we, we jump out there and be like, yeah, I'm a Hebrew and I keep the law. You know, what I'm saying, some of them real fancy. They say Torah. You know, what I'm saying, it's like, all right, for sure. But you don't really understand these commandments. You don't really understand this book. You haven't taken the time to actually look into it and, and try to get it. You know, what I'm saying, you just kind of pick stuff out to win an argument or pick stuff out to. To, you know what I'm saying, make a Christian feel like they don't know what they're talking about and all that. So, you know what I'm saying, we got to make sure that we learn this thing for ourselves, for our salvation. This is uh, Leviticus chapter 18, give me verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. Uh -huh. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein you dwelt, shall ye not do. He said, after the doings of the land of who? Egypt. He said, man, y'all going to come out of Egypt, y'all shall not do that stuff. There's a lot of people right now, they'll tell you, 
you know, well, the Israelite, you know, you got this, you got this, this Egypt versus Israelite debate that's constantly going on amongst the, the woke of us. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and you know, the Egyptians are the, the Kemet people there. They'll sit here and they'll tell you, you know what I'm saying, we're really from Kemet. And, you know what I'm saying, some of them will say Israel, Israelites never really existed. It's a myth. And then some of them will admit they existed and they'll just say, you know what I'm saying, like, we're the same people. We're doing the same things. Y'all got y'all stuff from us. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all was in our land. And then right after y'all came out of our land, guess what? Y'all came over with y'all law. And that's where Moses came. He was like, y'all, yeah, Moses stole that stuff from us. And he gave it. We look in the book. book clearly say, y'all not going to do what the Egyptians do. Let's talk about what they not going to do. Because then, then I want all y'all Egyptian, all y'all Kimmy people, I want y'all to go read your book of the dead. Go read. Go read the hieroglyphs. Go do all that stuff y'all think y'all doing, but y'all not. Go read the book of the dead for yourself. Stop listening to you people that be lying to you. Go read it for yourself, and you tell me if we can find anywhere where it's telling the Egyptians not to do the stuff we're about to read. Keep going. Let's see if we got it from the Egyptians. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, ye shall not do. Mm -hmm. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whether I bring you, shall ye not do. He said, where we took you from, you're not going to go. And where we taking you to, you're not going to do it. You ain't going to do what Egypt had, what had you doing, and we're about to take you to a new land. You're not going to do what they doing. You got to be a peculiar people. You got to be different. Ain't nobody got no laws like we got in our book. You people be lying. We look at this book. We got law. Everybody Christians don't like it. They be looking at law. Oh, I'm so happy I didn't live when the law was. Oh, shut up. I'm happy you didn't live there either. That's a wrong attitude. I, could, I wish I was dead. You've been dead. You know what I'm saying? I wish the most high. I mean, I, w I wish he would have put me in that time. You know what I'm saying? A righteous time where our, our sons and our daughters ain't going out in harlots. You know what I'm saying? We had a culture of women that would stand up, right? Women that would keep themselves. We had a culture of men that would protect women. Man slept with a woman before she had married. That, that hit her, her father had the right to say, you know what? You're going to marry my daughter now and take care of her for the rest of your life. Books say if he denied it, he didn't want her to, he can just say, you know what? You're going on then. But you still got to pay me. Still got to pay That book. What's wrong with these people? That's righteous. This stuff that y'all talking about ain't righteous. So you work for me now. Yeah. What you talking about? That's right. You had a you had a right. You had a, the woman had a right to have a man protect her. Right? Well, all this stuff is going crazy. You got that woman that just shot up Google. Right? Woman just shot yeah, up Google. woman just shot up the Google office. That's crazy. Because she out here trying to make a living for herself using Google and they cut her money off. Wow. They cut her, they start cutting her money off. She said, man, this stuff is crazy. She went there and shot a whole bunch of people. She didn't kill a whole. I think she like injured like three people, but still. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know what I'm saying? She, she ended up getting killed over there, so I think she killed herself. At least that's what they say. Right? All these people, a lot of people can't handle this stuff. A whole lot of stuff going on in this world. If we had our laws in place, that stuff wouldn't be happening. Don't nobody know how to deal with their emotions. Right? Keep going. You shall do my judgments and keep my ordinances. Mm -hmm. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, mm -hmm. which if a man do, he shall live in them. He I said, but if you do them, what's going to happen? You're going to live in them. How do you think the Messiah lived? <laughs> Messiah die. kept every one of them things. He couldn't die. It wasn't lawful for him to die. Messiah kept every one of them things. Guess what they still did to him? Killed him. They tried to kill that man. Guess what he did after that? Rose up. Third day, that man got right on up. That's book. That's a promise. That's book. The book that just told you, if you do them, you will live by him. He did them all. Who got something against him? Who going to accuse him of sin? Not to be right about it. You run your darn mouth, you ain't going to be right about it. The most I got ain't got no choice. You got to look at the man and be like, oh, that man ain't do nothing wrong. Get him back up. Third day, go ahead, get him. He been down long enough. Get him back up. Keep going. Book approve out everything. Book approve. The law, the law tell you why it had to be the third day. Watch this. Keep going. Yeah, the These people don't know nothing about no law. Let's talk about law today. The wages of sin is death. You know what I'm saying? What you, what you, what you going to do? <laughs> if you sin, you got to die, right? If you don't sin, you got to live. So if the man didn't sin and he died, what is he owed? Life. He put the most, he put Yah in debt to him. Ain't nobody ever put Yah in debt. Yah was sure put Yah in debt to him. He said, you know what, hold on. I kept the commandments and I'm still dead. That don't make sense. You owe me something. Most high God said, you know what? Yeah, you right. Go and get up. Third day. Let's talk about it. Come on, let's keep going. These people ain't on that law. We can talk about some law today. None of you shall approach to any that is near the kin of him to him to uncover their nakedness. I am Yahuwah. You 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 go ahead and read the book of the dead and you you tell me 
that they ain't got incest in there. It just tells you you can't approach anybody that's near to kin, near relation to you, right? Family members is what it's talking about. He said, don't do that, right? You open up the book of the dead. Go ahead and read it for yourself. Don't let these people lie to you. Read it. Read the book of the dead. That's a Kemet book. That's an Egypt book, right? Let these liars lie to you. Read it for yourself, and you tell me you're not going to find incest in there, right? Isis, this, these is Egyptian gods. Isis is Horus' mom. And guess what Isis did? She is the one who put Horus back together and slept with him. And that's the reason why they say that uh, it was a virgin birth. Even though it wasn't a virgin birth, she put a dead man back together. I don't know, is it Horus? Maybe, maybe, maybe Horus was a kid. It was... I might be getting the name wrong. You know, be, I don't pay no attention. Be, to it could be Osiris. Miss. Osiris? It might it be Osiris. Be, I don't know. Who I tell you what. She put her son. Let's put it like that. Isis put her son together and had a kid by They What was the one? Set and something. They were brothers and they one of them killed Set the and Osiris. Okay, so she put Osiris back together. Yeah, she put Osiris back together and had whores. Right? You look at these people myths. You look at it. That's incest right there. And that's the one they worship. They're already against her. He just, let, let me start with their gods. We're already wrong. Let's keep going. These people don't want to talk about no more. Y'all got it from what? Put it in your book. Let me see it in the book of the dead then where you're not supposed to do it. Keep going. The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shall thou not uncover. She is thy mother. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Mm -hmm. The nakedness of thy father's wife shall thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. Mm -hmm. The nakedness of thy sister the daughter of thy father or the daughter of thy mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. Right? Whether it's the daughter of your mom or the daughter of your dad. Right? If it's the daughter of your mom, what does that suggest? Already. That's your sister. That's, that's, not only that's your sister, but you got a different dad than your sister. Yeah. Right? So it's a, mm, you know, they call they call it half brother and sister. You know what I'm saying? That's what these people call it. They call it half brother and sister. He said, not even if that's the case. We ain't never call each other half brother. Nah, you know what I'm saying? That's the thing. It don't even make no darn Ever. sense. Ever. Yeah, sister or brother, that's it. You know what I'm saying? But you look at that, he looks like, not even if that's the case. Don't do it. All right, keep going. That ain't disrespectful to me. When I heard somebody say that, I was like, what? My sister, my sister. We got different dads. We get that. <clears throat> <clears throat> the nakedness of thy sister, the daughter of thy father, or the daughter, daughter of thy mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. Mm -hmm. The nakedness of thy son's daughter, or of thy daughter's daughter, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover, for theirs is thine own nakedness. That's right. The nakedness of thy father's wife's daughter, begotten of thy father, she is thy sister, thou shalt not uncover their nakedness. All right, so your father had a wife that had kids before the marriage? He said, that, that thing's still unlawful. She ain't even related to you, right? By blood, right? He said, that thing's still unlawful. Stop being nasty. Keep going. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's sister. She is thy father's near kinswoman. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness. That's your auntie, right? Leave your auntie alone. Keep going. Nakedness of thy mother's sister, for she is thy mother's near kinswoman. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's brother, Thou shalt not approach to his wife, she is thine aunt. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy daughter-in-law, she is thy son's wife. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife, it is my brother's kinsman. It is thy brother's kinsman. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter, neither shalt thou take her son's daughter, or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness, for they are her near kinswoman. It is wickedness. That's right. Neither shalt thou take a wife to her sister to vex her to uncover her nakedness beside the other in her lifetime. Right? He said, don't you take a wife of a sister to vex her. He put that in there because of Jacob. Mm -hmm. Jacob didn't do it to vex. Right? Jacob just looking like, you know what I'm saying? Jacob just looking for, man, I just want Rachel. You know what I'm saying? He got cheated. He's like, nah, you got to take Leah and you got Rachel afterwards. But the most high God saw that what that did to those women. You know what I'm saying? He put those women, you know what I'm saying? They were sisters. And they're dealing with the same man. So they're looking like, that vexed them. He was like, no, nah, don't you do that. Don't take sisters. That was against our law. You can't take no sisters. Now. That's crazy. All right, keep going.
Also, thou shalt not approach unto a woman to uncover her nakedness as long as she is put apart for her uncleanness. Mm -hmm. Moreover, in other words, don't be messing with these women while they on their period. That's book. That's our law. Keep going. Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech, neither get, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. All right. So he said, don't. Lord. Don't, don't commit adultery. Don't lay carnally with, with your neighbor's wife, right? She's a married woman. Don't, don't, be, don't be laying with her. Then he said, don't let your seed pass to mold it, right? So don't be sacrificing your babies with these, with these uh, you know what I'm saying, with these sex sacrifices that they used to have. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. It was just a big freaky deaky, right? The orgies and all that stuff these people be talking about. Thou the shall babies not. As a, as a result of it. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with woman. A lot of people don't understand that. This is what they do. Let me just go back to that Molech thing. You know what I'm saying? Because people will be like, okay, how does that relate to today? You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to try to be specific and say how it, how it exactly relates. I'm just going to tell you what they're doing and tell you what it kind of looked like it is today. Right? So what they were doing is they would have these sex parties. As a result, people would end up getting pregnant, you know, as a result of them. And then whatever baby came as a result of these sex parties, they would sacrifice, right? So they had all these pleasurous events, have a baby, and sacrifice the baby to Molech, right? In today's world, people running around, doing whatever they want to do, having sex, as a result, get pregnant, and then they abort these babies, right? So I ain't saying it's the same thing. I'm just saying that thing kind of similar. You know what I'm saying? That thing kind of similar. Either way, you're a sinner. Keep going. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind, it is abomination. Mm -hmm. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall, that, shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereunto. It All is right. confusion. She said, don't lie with the beast. Don't let the woman stand before the beast. In other words, stand in front of this animal. And let the animal do stuff to her. Alright? He said, that thing is confusion. Keep going. Yeah. And don't be homo. Mm -hmm. He's saying, don't be homo. Oh, yeah, don't be a homosexual. That thing is gift. Y'all go on my face with that stuff. Keep going. Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things. For in all he said, these, defile not in any of these things? In any of these things. For I got that. So that mean, that mean, I mean, if somebody commit adultery, you'd be like, mm, well, you know, it happens. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that thing happens. And then somebody commit homosexuality. I'd be like, ugh, I ain't about to talk to no homosexual. Uh, why are you treating it different? He said, don't do any of these things. I mean, somebody out there just, I mean, they, I mean, you just out there, you commit adultery. He said, don't do any. You should be treating them the same way. I mean, if you're going to treat the homosexual, and the homosexual come up to you, be like, ugh, I ain't talking, don't touch my hand. You know what I'm saying? You act all like, ugh, with the homosexual. But then the adulterer walk up, you know, oh, yeah, that's a good man. That's a nice man right there. Yeah, you a hypocrite. You a hypocrite. I shake both of their hands and call them a, a sinner. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no different. Both of y'all darn sin. The fornicator too, not according to this law. You know what I'm saying? The law don't touch it. You look at it, the law, it didn't say nothing about fornicating. He didn't say just, he didn't say just, you know what I'm saying, don't you, don't you just lie with a woman unless you marry with her. That ain't part of what he's talking about here. You know what I'm saying? He's just talking about the other sexual immorality. But fornication, a lot of people don't realize the fornication didn't come into play until Yahweh Shua came. You know what I'm saying? We have stuff in our law that tell us, we probably read over it. We have stuff in the law that tell us that, uh, you know what I'm saying, that we don't have no harlots in Yisrael and Things of that nature, but you also got information that'll let you know. Well, some people got it in, right? Even the even the priest. They say the priest can't marry uh, a. Uh, uh, I mean, the priest must have a virgin. That means for the priest that was restricted. What about everybody else? So if somebody else can have a woman that wasn't a virgin, that means she slept with somebody before, right? If if he was the only person that slept with her, then he got a virgin. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. We'll look into it. Where we Defile at? not yourselves in any of these things, for in all these the nations are defiled. Which he said, I in cast all out these the you. nations are defiled that I cast out before you. So he's letting you know, Egypt did this stuff. And where I'm about to take you, Canaan, they do this stuff. You don't do this stuff. Or what? Keep going. And the land is defiled, therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it. And the, and the land itself vomits out her inhabitants. What do you think going to happen to us if we do it? Oh, 
I'll, I'll give you a hint. What do you think happened to us when we did it? That land spit us out. We got right up, got our butts right up out of there. Same thing gonna happen to this land. Same thing that's gonna happen to all these darn lands that that, that lie against the most high God in this book. That's crazy. Keep going. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, mm -hmm. neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled. Mm -hmm. That the land spew not you out also when ye defile it, mm -hmm. as it spewed out the nations that were born before you, mm -hmm. that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore shall ye keep my ordinance that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. All right. Keep going. It should be chapter what? Chapter 19? Yeah. It's Leviticus chapter 19. We're just going to read through a little bit of law today. Ain't nothing wrong with it. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, Ye shall be holy, for I, Yahuwah, your God, am holy. Mm -hmm. So in other words, holy, I, that means separated. So he said, in other words, you're going to be different. He said, you shall be different because I'm different. You know what I'm saying? I'm separated. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. You shall fear every man his mother and his father, and mm -hmm. keep my Sabbaths. I am Yahuwah, your God. Mm-hmm. Turn ye not unto idols, nor make to yourselves molten gods. He said, don't turn on the idols and don't make molten gods. That get your crosses, right? If your cross is gold, what is that? That's a molten god. It's religious. You look to it. It represents God to you. So what is that? A molten god, right? Don't make an engraving image. So in your Bible, you put a cross on there and you got to engrave it. What do you think that is? It represents God to you, the dove. It represents God to you. Right? The fish. That's a Christian fish, ain't it? Okay, well, that represents God to you. All this stuff is molten gods. Why well, I got to sit here and try to argue with people about this stuff? There's a young lady that called you know what I'm saying? I think, I think, I think she's a Gentile. I'm not sure. You know what I'm saying? I'm not sure. I apologize if you're watching you're a Gentile, but she says she watched. Uh, but she called me, and you know what I'm saying? I appreciate her calling. But you know what I'm saying? She's struggling with that thing. You know what I'm saying? She's like, I heard you on one of the videos say that, uh, you know, like a cross and fish is um, idolatry. Left it on the message. I was like, all right, let me go ahead and call her back real quick. You know what I'm saying? Usually, you know what I'm saying? I, you know what I'm saying? I kind of put that thing off sometimes. But they say stuff like that. I'll be like, nah, I got to call them real quick. So I gave her a call. Like, you know what I'm saying? How you doing? And so uh, I was like, so what was your question exactly? And she was like, yeah, well, I paint. I'm an artist. You know what I'm saying? So I do stuff. And, you know what I'm saying? I like to make certain pictures. I was like, yeah, go ahead and throw them away. Yeah, you want to go ahead and throw all that stuff away. You making crosses and doves. And so she's like, but, but why? It's like I'm not bowing down to her. I was like, yeah, I understand. I get what you're saying. I was like, is it engraving? You know what I'm saying? She is like, no, it's pain. Okay, well, then is it an image? You know what I'm saying? And what does it represent to you? God. I got that. Like, I can get here and I can give you all types of philosophy and I can be like, listen, this is why God wants it to be that. And I did. I tell, I was like, okay, well, according to the book, just so you understand the why behind it, according to the book, you know what I'm saying? The Most High God is the only, the only his only image is Yahushua. You know what I'm saying? He's the invisible God. He only got one image and that's Yahushua. You know what I'm saying? So I try to explain that to her. But before I got into all that, I just wanted her to understand the reason why. Because the book say, period. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you if you get to training yourself to need more than the fact that I can read it and I know that's what it say, then you get yourself real dank. And now, now, on top of what the book say, I got to find a scientist that will back it up. So what happened when the scientist ain't going to back up the book? The book ain't worth it? So who you really worshiping at that time? The scientist. The scientist is who you really following. You know what I'm saying? Because if the if no scientist can back up the book, I'm, I mean, I don't, I just don't see why pork. We 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 not supposed to eat pork. So if I need a scientist to tell me that um, pigs are, you know, what I'm saying unclean animals because they keep all the toxins in their body or something like that. If I need a scientist to tell me that for me to rock with it, then really I'm following the scientist. So next year when the scientists tell me, oh yeah, well actually beef is the same way. Guess what I'm gonna say? We should be eating no meat. Right? So I just try, you know what I'm saying? When I talk, I just, I listen, because the book say it. Right? After you accept that, then we can go on and I can tell you what else the book say about that subject. You know what I'm saying? But once you, once we accept, it's because the book say it. That's it. That's all it is to it. Now let's learn the book and then, you know what I'm saying? Most I got to open up the rest for you. Right? Keep going. I better put that stuff down. Stop, stop following these people. And That's you, the Catholic stuff. And Catholics do that stuff. 
got the rest of the world doing it. You know what I'm saying Jesus, pieces, and all that make a fool out of it. Put this, you know what I'm saying? Put this, put this, uh, put this year and pee guy on a on a on a on a on a picture, and then you know what I'm saying? Make a chain out of him. Well, y'all didn't lost y'all darn mind. Just making a fool out of us. We'll pay all that money for this idolatry. Pay a bunch of money to go to hell. You can give it to me. I I listen. I'll let you know you're going to hell. You can give it to me instead. You know what I'm saying? Is that what you're trying to go go to hell? Trust me. I right, sure. You your butt going to hell. You keep doing exactly what you're doing. Give me the money. And then keep doing exactly what you're doing. Your better go to hell. Keep going. And if ye offer a sacrifice of peace offerings unto the Lord, ye shall offer it at your own will. Mm -hmm. It shall be eaten the same day you offer it, mm -hmm. and on the morrow, and if aught remain until the third day, it shall be burnt in the fire. But what happened after the third day? And if it be eaten at all on the third day, it is abominable. It shall not be accepted. You do. You wait until after the third day. You wait. If you wait on the third day and try to eat it, guess what's going to happen? That thing is abominable. It should not be accepted. Right? That's why Yahushua had to get up on the third day. He couldn't. What you thought Yahushua was going to be able to just get up whenever he want to? Well, like God said, nah, keep him in there. We got to wait until he's abominable. We got to wait. I mean, because if a per, I mean, what do you think is happening to cooked meat after three days? What do you think is happening to it? It's right. It's getting old. That thing is starting to get, it's starting to rot. So now, if Yahushua was dead only one day. I don't think they had refrigerators back then either. Y'all sure would have been like, I mean, people would have been like, you know what, he probably would have never really did. But now you lay down three days, they're going to be like, well, even our food that's cooked can't last that long. Right? Our food that's cooked can't even last that Oh, yeah, he did. Right? Before they'd be like, he probably just in a little coma or something. They thought he did. Three days, they are like, no, nah, that thing right. He good. He good to go there. He, he starting to rot. He get his butt up. Be like, yeah, what you talking about? Right? You had to prove that thing out. Keep going. Therefore, everyone that eats it shall bear his iniquity because he has profaned the hollow theme of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And thou, and that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Mm -hmm. And when you reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of thy field, neither shalt thou gather the gleanings of thy harvest. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt not glean thy vineyard, neither shalt thou gather every grape of thy vineyard. Thou shalt leave them for the poor and stranger. I am Yahuwah, your God. All right? So he's saying in your vineyard, in your yard, when you, you know what I'm saying, you got your, you got your farm going or whatever you got. You know what I'm saying? Everything that you grow, when you go out there to harvest it, you go out there, pick everything up, put it in the bundle, put it in the sheath. You know what I'm saying? And throw it in the back. He is like, don't take everything. Don't be sitting there just trying to make sure, go back, go give it a second run. Go give it a third run. Go give it a fourth run. Just make sure we got everything off. He said, no, nah, don't you do that. You know what I'm saying? You give it a good run, get what you need off of it, but then you leave some. You leave because you know what's going to happen? Back when we were going, we had poor people just walking around. And guess what? They're going to get hungry. Let them pick something out your field so they can eat. Leave something for the poor out there. They can just come through and pick out your field. You harvest what you need and then leave something for the poor. That was law. That wasn't no like suggestion. That's law. If you take everything, you a sinner. You took everything out your field, you a sinner if you do that. That's law for us. Tell me people, laws is more righteous than ours. People got poor people all down there. They don't even let you feed the poor. They made laws. You can't even, we can't even go down and feed people legally. Right? Made laws against us feeding people. That's crazy. That's these hypocrites. These laws ain't got nothing on ours. Keep going. Talking about I would. I don't know. If I was living back in no time. Ooh, I thank God I would. Yeah, you go and thank God for that. But if don't, you like, you like these wicked laws these people got. You wicked. It was a glorious time for our people. We had our own everything. Everything was ours. These people be the first one, black on, black on, shut up. When we had it, you need to take care of your butt. Don't take care of what you own now. Man told you how you're going to be faithful over a little bit. And make some, you know what I'm saying? How you going to be not be faithful over a little bit and somebody going to make you faithful over much? You know what I'm saying? You ain't even faithful over unrighteous, man. Man, man, man how you going to make you faithful over righteous stuff? That's crazy. Keep going. You shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. Uh-huh. Don't be stealing, don't be lying to one another, don't deal falsely with one another. Don't be trying to trick one another. We Hebrews. Keep going. And ye shall not swear by my name falsely, neither shall thou profane the name of thy God, I am Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. The wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night until the morning. Uh-huh. Thou shalt not curse the oh, dead. Oh, so hold on. Let's pay attention to that one. So, so, read that one for me one more time. 
Thou shalt not, oh wait, thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. The wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night until the morning. All right? You hire somebody, you tell them, I'm a, okay, I'll pay you on Friday. You work all week, I'll pay you on Friday. He said, you better get that money to on Friday. Don't be, don't be holding on to it. Oh, it's Friday night. Mm, you know what? I'm going to have to, let me just get you in the morning then. That's against our law. I'll tell you I'm going to get it to you Friday. I'm going to get that thing to you Friday. Period. I tell you, I'm going to pay you today. I'm going to get that thing to you today. Now, he said, don't let that thing sit, sit on you. That thing crazy. He said, you owe somebody money. You don't, don't let that thing. Don't be sitting there. Don't be sitting there late. You know what I'm saying? They come to give you a time period. You pay. Pay it within the time period. Even though these companies don't count. They ain't people. Right? These companies, the corporations, they ain't even people. They got their own socials, too. And they robbing us. Yeah, they definitely robbing us. Right? These companies don't count. That's not people. That's a corporation. Somebody trying to make you feel like a sinner because your credit card balance, you know. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, want, I, I don't want you to know. That thing different. I saw a post from a young lady the other day. She was like, you know what I'm saying? Should you even be giving anything in church if uh, if you in debt? I was like, well, you probably shouldn't be giving anything to eat crooked pastors anyway. But, you know what I'm saying? Assuming that, assuming that, you know what I'm saying, a man of God is teaching and preaching. You know what I'm saying? Ain't got nothing to do with you. You in debt. You know what I'm saying? It's two things about debt, right? So you got to understand. If... If I'm in debt because of my car payment, you know what I'm saying? Not, let's say I owe $20,000 on my car or $10,000 on my car or whatever, right? So I'm in debt because of my car payment. But every month when a payment is due, I make the payment. That's not against our book. Even if I'm paying it to a direct person, one, it's not against our book because I'm paying it to an entity. I'm paying, I ain't paying it to the human being. You know what I'm saying? I'm paying it to an entity. But even if I was dealing directly with T, right? And I'm saying, okay, T, you know what I'm saying? T, I told you every month or this day I'm going to pay you. And I pay every month as agreed. I'm not, and that's not a bad debt to him. I haven't defaulted. I haven't defrauded him. That's not against our, you know what I'm saying? They look at the book when they say, oh, man, oh no man, nothing. I'm paying as I owe to him. So according to this, I've agreed to make a payment to this man, and it's not sitting with me overnight. That's lawful. What's, what's unlawful is if now I default on the man, I say, okay, well, I didn't make that payment, I didn't make that payment, and that's a human being. That's a brother. You know what I'm saying? Now, that thing, that thing is a sin. Right, that thing is bad for, right? But it, when it when it comes to when it comes to you know what I'm saying to us having the means to take care of something and our brother and we don't, that's a sin for us. But when it comes to these entities and when it comes to all this other stuff, that's different. You know what I'm saying? You you pay on time, you do that. You paying as agreed. You paying according to the covenant to a contract. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, they uh. One time my mother-in-law tried to call us sinners because our car got repo. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? People don't know what they're pretty corporation. Uh, they right. no people. <laughs> Ain't doing like, what? I was like, I'm a sinner for being poor. What you mean? Yeah, and if you ain't got the if you ain't got the means to do it, that's gonna be a sin for you. You know what I'm saying? They ain't crazy. Most of God ain't. You know what I'm saying? If He didn't provide the means for us to do it, what we gonna do? You know what I'm saying? He'll get you back later, or never. <laughs> You're a corporation. Corporation. I might not ever get you back. <laughs> might not ever. You know what I'm saying? I care nothing about no corporation. Talk to a brother, a human being, are different. Keep going. Thou shalt not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but shall fear thy God. I am the Lord. Mm -hmm. You shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people, neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. Mm -hmm. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou he said, thou shalt not hate what? Thy brother in thy heart. So you shouldn't hate your brother. That's a book. That's law. That's Moses' law. You don't hate your brother in your heart. And then what else? Thou shalt not any wise, thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. And you should tell your neighbor when he wrong. That way he don't sin. That's what it means when you say rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. He said, well, you're going to tell your friend, you're going to tell your neighbor when he wrong and not let him sin. Make sure he ain't going to do nothing crazy. Right? Keep going. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. He said, you Lord. shall do what? Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of people, 
of the, the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I wonder where Yahushua got that from. That's law. He Christian think he came up with something new. He been told y'all this. Keep going. You shall keep my statutes. Thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not sow thy field with mingled seed, neither shall a garment mingled of linen and woolen come upon thee. All right, teach us how to be organized. Yeah, don't have no two animals mating together. That's crazy. Two different types of animals mating together. That's crazy. See, they don't be putting, you know what I'm saying? You got a field of uh, uh, crops out there. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to plant a corn next to, right next to my wheat. That thing crazy. You plant a field full of wheat, put another field full of corn. You know what I'm saying? You see these people do it, they do it right now because they know it's wise. It don't make no sense to have two different things growing next to each other. One going to choke the other one out. Keep going. And whosoever lies carnally with a woman that is a bondmaid, betrothed to a husband, and not at all redeemed, nor freedom given her. Oh, watch it. So watch what he said. Whosoever shall live, lie carnally with a woman who is a bondmaid. In other words, she's a servant. She's a slave. Right? She, she has a debt to somebody. Right, so she's a bondmaid, but not what? Betrothed to a, that is a bondmaid, betrothed to a husband, and uh -huh. not at all redeemed. So she's betrothed to a husband, she's a bondmaid, she sold, and she's betrothed to a husband. In other words, somebody's like, okay, I'm about to marry her, but not at all redeemed. All right, but nobody's paid for her yet, nothing's happened yet. Let's see, if he sleep with her, what's going to happen? No freedom given her, she shall be scourged. They shall not be put to death because she was not free. Right? They shall not be put to death, and she's going to end up being scourged. You know why she's going to be scourged? Because she belonged to somebody else. Right? And she disobeyed they, they rules. But they're not going to be put to death because she wasn't married and she wasn't free. Keep going. Now, a person would say, well, what if he forced her upon her? And yeah, we got a lot for that. Yeah, we got that. That's a whole different situation. You know what I'm saying? If she didn't consent to it, that's a whole other. Yeah, he got to die if she didn't consent to it. You know what I'm saying? The book says if she scream out, you know what I'm saying? That thing done. You know what I'm saying? He got to die for that one. You know what I'm saying? That's in Deuteronomy. We'll get to that one. Keep going. And he shall bring his trespass offering to the Lord unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, mm -hmm. even a ram for a trespass offering. Mm -hmm. And the priest shall make an atonement for him with the ram of the trespass offering before the Lord for his sin, which he had done. Mm-hmm. And the sin which he had done shall be forgiven him. Mm -hmm. And when ye shall come into the land. If you look at it. So so think about this. When we're talking about fornication and all that. What was that? That was fornication. That's fornication. Right? That's fornication. So if you look at if you look at the woman. Right? The woman at that point is no longer a virgin. Right? So now you see how women who are no longer virgins. She lives. She didn't die. It ain't no law to say, you know what I'm saying, she got to die because of that. She lives. Only reason that she was, she was scored because she owned, she was owned by somebody. Right? You will never see, like, you're not going to see this law applying to just a regular woman. Like, a regular woman just moseying along and decides to have sex, this, that, and other. You're not going to see that law. Right? You're only going to see it come up when a man marries a woman and he find out she wasn't really a virgin. But she said she was a virgin. Now it's a problem. You know what I'm saying? If a man think he marrying a virgin, she claims she a virgin, told her father she is a virgin, somebody else got to it, that's a problem now. You know what I'm saying? That, that law come, people dying over that one. You know what I'm saying? But if a man know he not marrying a virgin, that thing different. You know what I'm saying? I say that just because there's a lot of people that teach, as soon as you sleep with a woman, you marry to her. That's a foolish. Thing. That's not what the books say. Otherwise, they marry. You don't see that in the book. Keep going. Matter of fact, grab, uh, grab Exodus chapter 22. We'll talk about it a little more. It's Exodus chapter 22, because I know a lot of y'all need proof. And I appreciate that, too. All right, remember Exodus chapter 22 is right out there. Remember, Exodus chapter 20, give us the law. Give us the Ten Commandments, rather. All right? At the 10, Most High God was like, yeah, he's about to go to that 11. We're like, nah, 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 Moses, why don't you go talk to him? And after that, it started at Exodus chapter 21. He started to give us laws. So we go into Exodus chapter 22. We continue. This is Exodus chapter 22. Give me about verse uh, 16. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed. He said, her, if a man entice a maid that is betrothed or is not. Is not betrothed. So she's not married. She's not even engaged to be married. 
And he do what to her? And lie with her. And he and then he he entice her. Yeah, he entice her and lie with her. Uh huh. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. Okay. So after that, if he lay if he lay with a woman that's not patrol, she is a single woman. Guess what? He got to marry. So that's where they get it from. They look and they say, you know what? If you sleep with a woman, that's your wife. But let's see what happened next. If her father utterly refused to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. Her father can be like, that thing ain't happening. So if he say that thing ain't happening, guess who got to pay? The man who slept with her. Well, all right, man, I got to pay that money. The dowry of a virgin. She ain't no whore. She ain't no hooker. But he paying the dowry, the dowry of a virgin. He deflowered his wife. I mean, his uh, daughter. So since he did that, now the daughter, you know what I'm saying? Men want a virgin. You know what I'm saying? Our time now, you know what I'm saying? It's just, that thing all messed up now. But you know what I'm saying? Men want a virgin. So you, now you defile a wife. It's like, oh, okay, well, uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I mean, uh, his daughter, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know what I'm saying? What we going to do? You know what I'm saying? Right, go ahead and pay her. She ain't marrying your butt. And the father's like, nah, that's a bad character. We good. We'll find somebody else. You just go ahead and pay up the money and pay what you owe. Right? Keep moving. He set her up for another man. Right? Keep going. Watch this. If her father, oh, wait. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Oh, no, we good. Go uh, go to Numbers chapter 30 real quick. Because now, cause now you know what they're going to say. They're going to be like, well, the father is the one that said it. The woman don't have no right. What's wrong? You know, Lou Wong, she probably hiding from me. Probably hiding from you. Go look for him. It's verse one. It's Numbers chapter thirty, verse one. And Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, "This is the thing which the Lord has commanded: mm -hmm. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that he proceeds out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. All that proceeds out of his mouth." If a woman also vow a vow unto the Lord and bind herself by a bond, being in her father's house in her youth, and her father hear her vow, and her bond wherewith she has bound her soul, and her father shall hold his peace at her, then all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherewith she had bound her soul shall stand. All right? So in other words, if a woman lives with her father, then the father, according to our law, the father has to take care of her, and therefore the father is the one that can say, you know what? That's not going to fly. Or that is going to fly. But if he hold her peace, then whatever the woman say, that thing will go. So if father holds his peace, whatever uh, he say going to go, or whatever you know, the woman say going to go in that situation, then if she don't have a father, if she's not staying with a father, guess who running the show at that point? Uh, well, if she don't have a husband, right? We're talking about an unmarried woman. Oh, well, it's her. Yeah. It's going to go whatever she found herself to. Our system was just set up to always have a man responsible for the woman. Right? Because we understood the woman as the weaker vessel. Not weaker in the sense that, that you know what I'm saying, we, we value them less. You know what I'm saying? Just weaker in the sense that they not they built to nurture. They built to be protected. They built to be taken care of. Right? Keep going. But if her father disallow her in the day that he hears, not any of her vows of her bonds wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand mm -hmm. and the Lord shall forgive her because her father disallowed her All right we look at it you know what I'm saying we talking I'm trying to tell you it wasn't no you know what I'm saying fornication that 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 that's in the book you know what I'm saying that that's in the that we read about in the New Testament you know what I'm saying that thing didn't come until Yahushua All right if it if it had come any earlier then it put God in a tight position you know what I'm saying because uh look at uh look at Hosea look at Hosea chapter one this is Hosea chapter 1, verse 1. It put God in a real tight position if that thing came early. Just like we were reading about, you know what I'm saying, sleeping with nearest kin. You know what I'm saying? You look at it, before our, before our law came, you'll see that thing happened in our history. How you think? How you think Cain and Abel and all the you know what I'm saying? How you think they started Seth? How you think they started to reproduce? Somebody had to sleep with their sister. 
or sleep with their mama or sleep with somebody, that thing would have been unlawful if the law had hit that, at that time. And then nobody would have been able to be populated. Right? Even you look at, you know what I'm saying, Abraham, and you look at all these different things, Abraham, you know what I'm saying, he's married to his sister. When that law came, though, it was like, that's it. When that law came, as soon as the law hit, that thing outlawed. Right? But that and before that, you see, before the law, there is no sin. You know what I'm saying? So you look at it, when y'all, before y'all Yahushua came, that thing wasn't a sin. That's why you can see this. This is uh, Hosea chapter 1, verse 1. Then I want verse uh, chapter 3, I think. Yeah, because that wouldn't be fair, right? God didn't give his law to Abraham. God didn't give his, well, he didn't get that part of the law to Abraham. He didn't get that part of the law to Adam and Eve. So whatever they was doing was what they was doing. He didn't put regulations on that. He didn't give them the information. Yeah. As soon as God tells you not to do something, that's when that thing become law. All right? It was law for Adam don't eat from that tree. That was law. Right. Just like Jacob had wives that were sisters. He didn't tell Jacob not to do that. Yeah. So when we got it, when we got the law, he was like, okay, don't do that. Don't do that foolishness. There's a lot of stuff throughout our book. The law had to come and correct the stuff that happened in the past. Like, no, nah, don't do that. We good on that stuff. All right? This is Hosea chapter 1, verse 1. The word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Beri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Mm -hmm. And in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. Mm -hmm. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms, for the land has committed, for the land has committed great whoredom. So now, if if that's the case where a woman is married to the first man she sleep with, then when he take a wife of whoredoms, he committing adultery. So now you are trying to suggest to me that the Most High God just told Hosea to commit adultery with a woman. That don't make no darn sense. You ain't going to get, most I got already told you, he ain't going to tempt you with sin now. That's crazy. Right? Not him do it. He might send the devil to go out there and do it. He, he ain't about to just look at you and, for a prophecy's sake, tempt you to sin. That don't make sense. Go to, uh, go to chapter 3, verse 1. Hosea chapter 3, verse 1. All right? He said, go get you a wife of whore. All right? And she got to have children of whoredoms. You take on her kids and her. Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet, love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel, who took other gods and loved flagons of wine. Right? He ain't about to tell a man to go out there and go sin. Now, that's crazy. Right? So we look at it, you know what I'm saying? It's important for us to understand what the books are saying and make sure that that we can separate the thing. We're not just jumping off the book. You know what I'm saying? Jumping off or jumping out a window trying to make assumptions and guesses. And, you know what I'm saying? Just take your time with this book. Understand what the law is saying. Look at it. Don't make no assumptions. Just take it and say, you know what? Exactly what it say, that's the truth. If you start getting the conflict, keep studying. Keep looking at it. Usually the conflict comes because we start making assumptions. Conflict ain't coming from what the word is saying. All right? This is, uh, this is Leviticus chapter 19. Where we leave off? He said, children of Israel shall abide many days without a king and without a prince and without a what? sacrifice. That's a good chapter. Him. That's cold, bro. Yeah, but It was the last time we had one, bro. Like, Been a while. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's been a while. He didn't really mean it when he said many days. Yeah, buddy. Hezekiah was the last one. Uh, my goodness. Jump back over to Leviticus chapter 19, verse uh, 20. He make a statement, bro. You can just imagine him, you know what I'm saying? You can just keep him like, what I tell you? What I tell you? I told you, didn't I? Yeah, I ain't gonna listen. Verse 20. Uh, well, I don't know where we leave off. We probably left 22. off. 22. Okay, so this Leviticus chapter uh, 19, verse 22. And the priest shall make atonement for him with the ram of the trespass offering before the Lord for his sin which he has done, and the sin which he had done shall be forgiven him. Mm -hmm. And when ye shall come into the land and shall have planted all manner of trees for food, 
Then ye shall count the fruit thereof as uncircumcised. He you, said, he said, you're going to plant trees for food. Notice he said trees. He didn't say, he didn't say plant, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, like weed or anything like that. He said when you plant trees for food. Keep going. Then ye shall count the fruit thereof as uncircumcised. Three years shall it be uncircumcised unto you. He said, if that thing produce any fruit in three years, it's uncircumcised to you. In other words, don't touch it. Don't eat it. He said, three years you're going to do that. Then what? It shall not be eaten of. But in the fourth year, all the fruit thereof shall be holy to praise the Lord with all. All right? And in the fifth year shall ye eat of the fruit thereof, that it may yield unto you the increase thereof. I am Yahuwah your God. So he said, now when you go into this new land, go ahead and plant you some trees. But you wait three years. For three years, don't you darn eat it. In the fourth year, you give that thing to God. Everything in the fourth year, that thing go to the most high God. But in the fifth year, that thing gonna give, it's going to yield unto you a lot. Even if you look at these people and when they tell you to build a tree, you know how long they're going to say it is if we're... For it to produce good fruit, three to four years. You know what I'm saying? You go look at these people's books and how to plant these trees. Where do you think they get this stuff from? Right? He said, don't touch it in three years. You plant your tree, don't touch it in three years. Oh, in the fourth year, everything come off of that thing belong to me. But in the fifth year, that thing, you can have it after that. That's all you. Right? That's a book. That's our book. That's the wisdom of our God. These people ain't got nothing on our God. Keep going. These people don't know no book. Ye shall not eat anything with the blood, neither shall ye use enchantment, nor observe times. Mm -hmm. All these different horoscopes and all this stuff, that's observing time. You be looking like, yeah, I'm a Sagittarius. You shut your mouth. You ain't nothing. You don't even know nothing about that stuff. Some people out there, you look, ain't disrespecting nature. They take that stuff serious. You know what I'm saying? You sitting there reading these websites and all these stuff, fortune cookies and all that. Y'all better leave these stuff and these things alone. Y'all know this stuff, this stuff is real. These people play with it because they don't think it's real. You know what I'm saying? You people don't believe in nothing. You know what I'm saying? And some Christians, they, you know what I'm saying? They don't think it's real either. They tell you, oh, that stuff is fake. And they try to make you think it's fake. Then a the person really sees some, some crazy stuff, and they be like, no, nah, man, I can't mess with Christianity. You know what I'm saying? Hey, they don't even believe this stuff. I know I experienced something. Christian trying to tell you you didn't experience nothing. But like, no, I experienced something. Yeah, some of these people really do experience Bro, something. You better leave that, that stuff alone. Who was that lady on TV that passed out? Looked like she, like she looked scared or she looked like she saw something? What are you talking about? Bro, they was laughing about it. They was making all kind of memes. It was on Facebook. It was, it was a talk show, a famous talk show lady, bro, the black lady. She was oh, you talking about uh, Wendy Williams? Yeah, yeah. She looked like she might have seen something that day. <laughs> you say when she passed out? Yeah, I saw that video. You said she might have saw something. She huh? might have saw something, bro. That's might. the face of somebody that saw something. It's awesome thing. You might have, you know what I'm saying? You never know. These wicked people here around, all them wicked people, you never know what's happening up there. She probably was These people ain't gonna talk about it. These people be, you know what I'm saying, messing with little kids and, and sacrificing and doing all this all type of stuff. These people are weird, you know what I'm saying? They like that stuff too. A lot of these people know know it's some real stuff out here. That's why they cling to it so much. You know what I'm saying? Most like God said, don't mess with it. I don't care how real it is. Don't mess with it. Just leave that stuff alone. Keep going. You shall not round the corners of your beards, neither shall you mar the corners of your of your beard. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. You know what I'm saying? I, you know what I'm saying? Just by default. You know what I'm saying? I got that thing covered right now. I ain't got no mark, no nothing. Ain't no line up, no nothing. But you look at what he's talking about, he ain't talking about he ain't talking about fashion. He ain't talking about making a kid making a line up in your head or shaving your beard and all that. He ain't talking about that. He talking about he said it, then read it one more time. Watch this. You shall not round the corners of your beard, neither shall you mar the corners of your beard. Mm -hmm. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. He said, I am the Lord. For the what? The dead. That's what he's talking about. He said, when somebody die, don't you go shaving your head and marring yourself and plucking your beard out. You know what I'm saying? Out of anguish and out of mourning. He said, don't go do that stuff. Don't do this stuff for the dead. Don't go tattooing your homie, your dead homie name on you for the dead. That's what he's talking about. That stuff is not, a, that stuff is against our book. You got people out here, they got beards, you know what I'm saying? They never shaved them, never, you know what I'm saying? They looking like, you know what I'm saying, holding on to it. They be like, yeah, we got to keep the law. they like, man, y'all don't know nothing about no law. Y'all don't know nothing about no law. Y'all, bro, bro, I had to do, you know what I'm saying? A sister came on, she is like, uh, what she said? She said, uh, she said, uh, I forgot what the video, she posted a video. 
you know what I'm saying, the dude in the video, you know what I'm saying, didn't have a beard. You know what I'm saying, he's a Christian pastor, and he didn't have a beard. You know what I'm saying, he's shaved. And he is saying some stuff. Oh, he's he talking about a woman. He was like, you know what I'm saying, like woman and how they should dress and all that stuff. And so he had all, all these mannequins up of like how, how women dress. And he is like, man, you know what I'm saying, this, this stuff is crazy if we send our kids out looking like this and doing all this crazy stuff. And so, you know what I'm saying, the Hebrew dude, he got on there, he was like, yeah, he make a good point. But, you know what I'm saying, he shaved his beard. You know what I'm saying, he's probably a Christian. She was like, yeah, he, he is a Christian, but, you know what I'm saying, but the law don't say, you know what I'm saying, you can't, she was right, you know what I'm saying, the law don't say you can't, you can't shave your beard. He was like, yeah, dude. So I was like, I didn't want her to try to teach the book, you know what I'm saying, so I tried to slide in there, and whenever I see, you know, one, I was like, nah, don't, don't do that trying to teach the book, you know what I'm saying, I'll I cover you, I got it. And she got a husband, I know he would have did it too, but, you know what I'm saying, I just slid in there just in case, you know what I'm saying, he didn't spot it fast enough or just in case he don't believe that way. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, I jumped in there. I was like, eh, well, you know, she right. You know what I'm saying? It's I go. It's what the book says. It's that nothing. He was like, bro, so you trying to tell me you can shave your beard? Yes or no? I was like, bro, I just told you that. I'm showing you the scriptures. You know what I'm saying? I was like, you misunderstanding it. You know what I'm saying? Because they look at this and they just look at it like it's just flat saying, don't shave, period. Hey, what the book? We got uh, David's son to say he used to pull his yeah, head. Yeah, and uh, uh, Paul, after his vow. Yeah, he shaved his head for the vow. That's the right vow. You know what I'm saying? Look at uh, look at uh, what on Jeremiah 48. Uh, uh, Jeremiah 48 for me. Matter of fact, grab first, first give me Leviticus 21. Real quick, just give me a Leviticus 21, and we are gonna get Jeremiah 48. This is Leviticus chapter 21, verse uh one. Leviticus what? 21 verse one. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto the priests, the sons of Aaron, and say unto them, There shall none be defiled for the dead among for what? his people. Be defiled for the dead among his people. So now we already know. We already talking about the dead, right? Don't be defiled for the dead, right? Keep going. But for his kin that is near unto him, that is, for his mother and his father, for his son and for his daughter and for his brother, and for his sister, a virgin that is nigh unto him, which has had no husband, for her may he be defiled, mm -hmm. but he shall not defile himself, being a chief man among his people, to profane himself. Mm -hmm. They shall not make baldness upon their head. They shall not do what? Make baldness upon their head. And they shouldn't do what else? Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard, nor make any cuttings in their flesh. For the dead. He's talking about for the dead. You see, he tell them, don't do these things for the dead. You'll never see this in any other context in the book. Every time it's commanded for us, I didn't command about three times. There's another time in Deuteronomy. Each time is referencing for the dead. You know what I'm saying? You look at this and you calling people a sinner, saying they breaking our law. You know what I'm saying? When you're speaking out of turn, you just got to relax. You can't, you can't, you have to learn this book. A lot of these people do not know the law. They run with, to grab some stuff, run with it, misinterpret it, and make a darn mess out of stuff. All right? Grab uh, Jeremiah chapter 48 so we can look at, look at an example of what it's really talking about. He told y'all when we started off, he said, I'm going to make you different from the Egyptians. You're not going to be like the Canaanites. Everything that he's given us is to separate us from the other nations. He's telling them you will be holy. In other words, you will be different. You will be separated. That's what the law is about. It's trying to teach us how to be an outstanding nation. We want to stand out. In Jeremiah chapter 48. Give me verse 35. We still, we, you know what I'm saying, not even knowing, you know what I'm saying, it's always been our culture to do so, even though our people was robbed of everything, we still stand out. Yeah, buddy, that thing natural. 35 what? Uh, this is uh, Jeremiah chapter 48, verse 35. Moreover, I will cause to cease in Moab, says the Lord. He said, I'm going to cause to cease in Moab. What do you think that means? Stop. Killing some folks. All right, let's see. Him that offereth in the high places, and him that burns incense to his gods. Mm -hmm. Therefore my heart shall sound for Moab like pipes, and my heart shall sound like pipes for the men of Kir Hires. Mm -hmm. I wonder what they're going to do. Because the riches that are has gotten are perished. Mm -hmm. That he has gotten shall perish. Mm -hmm. For every head shall be bald, and every beard clipped upon all Every head going to be what? Bald. And every beard going to be what? Clipped. 
And I wonder why. Keep going. Upon all the hands shall be cuttings, and upon all the loins sackcloths. Uh-huh. There shall be lamentation, generally upon the housetops of Moab and in the streets thereof. I for wonder I, why people are lamenting. All right, keep I, going. For I've broken Moab like a vessel wherein no pleasure, wherein is no pleasure, says the Lord. Uh-huh. They shall howl, saying, How is it broken down? Mm -hmm. How has Moab turned the back with shame? Mm -hmm. So shall Moab be a derision and a dismaying to all them about him. Mm -hmm. For thus says the Lord, Behold, he shall fly as an eagle and shall spread his wings over Moab. Mm -hmm. Kiriath is taken, and the strongholds are surprised, and the mighty men's hearts in Moab at that day shall be as the heart of a woman in her pain. Uh-oh, what's going to happen to Moab? And Moab shall be destroyed from being a people because he has magnified himself against Yahuwah. He's going to destroy his butts. Why do you think they cutting in their flesh? Why do you think they shaving their heads? Why do you think they, they cutting their beards? Because they people are dead. All right? That's what the Gentiles did. So our law was telling us, don't be like them. Don't cut your hair. Don't shave your beard. Don't make marks in your flesh for the dead. This is law. How are you going to do something and command Paul to do it? How are you going to do something and command the Nazarite vow to do it? Right? And it's a lot. Uh, grab Ezekiel chapter 5, verse 1. Oh, yeah. It's Ezekiel chapter 5, verse 1. I forgot about that one. And thou, son of man, take thee a sharp knife. Take thee a sharp knife and what else? Take thee a barber's razor. A barber's razor? Uh-oh, keep going. And cause it to pass upon thy hand. I'm trying to figure out why with Ezekiel, why would there even be a such thing as a barber's razor Razor, if we ain't got, our law told us don't even cut it. I don't even know why that thing would be produced in Israel. Where do you even get a barber's razor from? Like we just walking around looking like cavemen. Yeah, I mean, we just looking rough. I don't know how these people just, I be like, man, I don't know what's wrong with these people. I'm looking rough right now, but that thing about choice, kind of. You know what I'm saying? That thing, I'll be looking at I'm saying, our people wasn't crazy. Our people were clean. What's wrong with you? All right? Take you a barber's razor and what else we going to do with it? <laughs> it causes it to pass upon thy head. No, 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 no. That's not what it says. It said cut a slice of bread. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Spread some butter on some bread real quick with that barber's razor. Let me see. Keep going. It causes it to pass upon thy head and upon thy beard. Upon that beard, too? Then take the balances to weigh and divide the hair. He said, cut all that stuff off. How is most like God going to command you to commit a sin? Don't make sense. Don't make sense. He'll never tempt you to sin. That's book. Boy, what's wrong with these people? Learn the law. Look at it. You got to see. And you can read the law. You could have read the whole law. Never got that because what? you didn't look at the history. So you would have stopped. If you looked at the law, you could honestly make that mistake because you've never seen examples of stuff play out. You never looked at me like, well, Ezekiel was told to do it. So that thing, that thing, if you look at it, say I make the assumption that this is talking about I should never shave, period. Then I, I never see that Ezekiel was commanded to do it, and I never knew that the Most High God told, told, uh, told us through, what, James? That he wouldn't, he wouldn't tempt us with evil. If I never knew those two pieces of information, then I can make an assumption about the law. But now if you look at the history, then you learn, in the prophets, and you learn about Ezekiel. And then you look at the Gospels, and then you learn about the epistle letters after it. Then you learn, okay, now it starts to line everything up for you. We can't take pieces of the book, the ones that we prefer but the other, you know what I'm saying, and then make a mess. Just learn the whole thing. Take your time. Take you a year. Take you a nice little year and be critical. Read the book and be critical of everything that you believe. You'll be, you'll be better for it in the end, but you have to take your time. You can't, you can't be out here just trying to, as soon as you learn a little bit, just out here calling yourself a teacher, a prophet, a uh, apostle. I would think people run, they run too quick. Just sit your butt down. You ain't no darn apostle. What's wrong with y'all? Where we at? Let's finish our Leviticus. Where we leave off? Leviticus 22, 28. Leviticus what? 22, 28. 19, 28? No, we were on, uh, oh, yeah, 19, 28, yeah. It's Leviticus chapter 19, verse 28. We you could read 22. We ain't going to do it today, though. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Uh-huh. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. 
lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness. He said, don't, don't prostitute your daughter. All right? That thing's a sin. That's crazy. All right? How your woman, how your daughter sleeping with, with, with men just for money? That's crazy. He said, don't you do that stuff. What these Gentiles do. He told us, don't do it. Keep going. You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Mm -hmm. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither speak after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Yeah, don't be looking, don't be looking for somebody to connect you to a dead auntie, a dead dad, dead mom. Don't do that stuff. You look at them people do that stuff. They let me tell you something. These people connect you with their butt. You know what I'm saying? They'll do something. They'll connect you with something that you think is their butt at least. You know what I'm saying? It'll be real. And you were really experienced. They'd be like, yeah, my uncle used to say that all the time. My mom, you tell me, there's nobody that would have knew that except for my mom. You know what I'm saying? And she's dead, and this spirit just told me it. It has to be my mom. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Your butt gonna end up right in hell, too, messing around with that stuff. I ain't gonna sit here and tell you it's not real. You you, you gonna be connected with some stuff for real. I'm gonna tell you, you messing with demons. Stuff gonna correct your darn soul. Keep going. Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head. That's the gray head, so the old person. All right, he said when the old person comes, you should rise up. In other words, show respect. All right, you respect the old person. All right, keep going. And honor the face of the old man, mm -hmm. and fear thy God, I am the Lord. Mm -hmm. And if a stranger sojourn with thee in your land, ye shall not vex him. All right, if a stranger sojourn with you in, that, in your land, don't vex him. How are you going to look at him? But the stranger shall, the stranger that dwells with you, shall be unto you as one born among you, and you shall love him as yourself, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Yeah, when a stranger is among you, you gotta look at him just like you look at your brother, right? That's book, that's law. Bet you ain't teaching that. Why they ain't teaching that? These hypocrites. They trying to teach you to hate these white folks. If they end up in the land with us, guess how you gotta treat them? Just like a brother. We in they land right now. You think the most I got, the most I got going to teach us to treat them any differently? That's crazy. But shut up. We've been in the captivity of Egypt. We know what it's like for a person to oppress us. We in captivity now in America. We know what it's like for people to oppress us. So are we going to try to re-oppress them, or oppress them instead? That's crazy. That ain't how our book teach us. That's that, that whole spirit. That thing ain't, ain't none of that stuff in our book anywhere. You know what I'm saying? The way these people act. Our whole book is about letting God get the judgment. He told us that in our law. In Deuteronomy, he said, vengeance is his. I don't know where we get off thinking that we can, you know what I'm saying, we can defend ourselves and, you know what I'm saying, get off. We can do it when the Most High God tell us. He tell us to take up swords right now. Guess what we doing? Bet them swords coming out. He tell us to take up guns right now. Guess what we doing? Bet you, I don't preach no soft God. Don't make a mistake. I know I, I know the God. I swear, that thing, oh, that thing, I ain't like a Christian now. He Christian, no. No, I don't preach no soft God. God to tell us to kill your butt. And if he do it, we'll darn do it. But if he tells us to stand down, relax, get slapped, get beat, don't go nowhere either, guess what we got to do? Stand there and darn do it. He tell us, don't worry about it. Whatever they do, I'm going to double on to them. We better just sit back and say, mm, I don't know how this thing going to play out. Let's see how it happens. We just got to wait. We just got to wait. Somebody going to come and do all that. You know what I'm saying? That thing going to happen. We've seen it happen. Only reason these people was ancient, they sitting there, I ain't about to sit here and let these white folks, you know what I'm saying? That's the white man religion got you doing that. It's just tricking you. Okay. You go ahead and do what you need to do then. You jump off. I'll be trying to tell these white folks. It's a lot of it's a lot of black people. You teach us our history, you can straighten up a lot of these black people. For real. You can straighten up a lot of these black people. You teach us. Y'all got these people thinking that y'all wrote this book. That's why they don't mess with it. You know what I'm saying? You didn't tell them the truth. You know what? Hey, 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 black man, before you shoot me now. Y'all wrote the book. That was y'all history. Y'all think you shouldn't, you go ahead and obey that thing right now. You know what I'm saying? They're relaxed. Teach the people the truth. Teach the people the truth. They're relaxed. You know. Only reason they rebel, one of the reasons they rebel against this thing, because they think y'all did it. They think y'all tricking them. That's all right. That thing gonna, I mean, let me tell you, they ain't gonna work out the way God wanted to work out no matter what. The ones of us that's, that, that's gonna be saved in the end, we gonna stand right here. Let y'all do whatever y'all need to do. Most like God gonna use all these sinner, these sinner Hebrews to kill y'all butts off. Then what? Most of God look like, eh, I didn't tell them to do that. We gonna look like, eh, most of God didn't tell them to do that stuff. That's y'all butt. I ain't rocking with no murderers. No, not at all. We gonna condemn them the whole way through. Like, nah, y'all shouldn't have did that thing, though. That's God's plan, though. 
You know what I'm saying? That's it. That got me. You killed him now. That God plan. That thing was a sinner, though. God got him. And he got you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's it for what? Yeah, that thing, that thing done now. You God know what I'm saying? God get a discount right now. Yeah, buddy. The whole time. Right? You know what I'm saying? You got a lot of this stuff. Just teach people the truth. It'll be better for y'all. They don't believe it, though. They don't believe that thing. They told, they're too scared to teach people the truth. Like, oh, we teach them that. You know what I'm saying? We know who they are. You know what I'm saying? They're scared of what's going to happen. It'll be better off if you teach people the truth. Eventually, I know these people going to start watching in and start looking at, you know what I'm saying, the stuff that's going on. All these different things. They got a, they got Amazon. You know what I'm saying? Amazon got a little program that they working on. That any audio you put on, that thing automatically turn it into, you know what I'm saying? Like long audio clips, like we be doing, turn it all into words where you can dissect it, search it. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like, so you know, right now you can type it into Google, just type in a word, and it'll bring up an article. You know what I'm saying? You can click on that article and find whatever sentence or whatever you typed in in that article. They got something like that where they're going to make it for like videos and audio where you just like you type it in and go right to the time that they said it in the audio. You know what I'm saying? So once that happens, right? And it, since they, it's happening, we know it's really already happening at some, some level. So if the CIA and the, N the, the NSA and all these different agencies that's secret, that doing all this secret work, if they happen to be involved with the knowledge that, mm, it's a lot of people around the world saying these, these Hebrews are really the Hebrews. Right? There's a lot of people in the world that know that, right? If they got people who speak Arabic, and they're dealing with all these conflicts, and they happen to stumble across some documents in, you know what I'm saying, the Arab world, talking about, you know what I'm saying, like, yeah, those were the people of the book. You don't think they know some of this, though? So then if they know it, and they like, mm, let's see, if, if J. Edgar Hoover, you know what I'm saying, back in, what was it, 60s, you know what I'm saying? J. Edgar, J. Edgar Hoover was afraid of, quote, the black messiah arising. They was like, you know what I'm saying? We don't want the black messiah to arrive. So you know how we're going to handle this? Let's kill anything that looked like it. Let's kill Dr. Martin Luther King. Let's kill uh, Malcolm X. Let's kill uh, Fred Hampton. You know what I'm saying? Let's kill all these black leaders that are eloquent and that saying something that might make a little bit of sense to somebody else that's black. You know what I'm saying? If that's the attitude that they took then, what attitude do you think they're going to take now? After they already been through it, they see how what they did wrong at that time, how it blew up in their face, we can do the thing a lot easier. Oh, you got to get them quicker. Right? So if I can just search, you'd be like, okay, who talking about this and who like who information is actually accurate? You know what I'm saying? Who, who actually saying the right thing? Oh, let me get their butt quicker. Let me tell you something. These people live. They gonna end up, if they're not listening yet, they're going to end up listening. These people going to end up listening. They might already be listening to some of us. You know what I'm saying? Us and other people around the world that's out here teaching the truth. Or that, and they probably don't even know the truth. It's just like, what sounds like the truth? What sounds like somebody who really know what they're talking about? All right, get they butt. All right? Start messing with they stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's just like this war over in, uh, in Syria. You let these people, you know what I'm saying? You got every, last year, last year around this same time, you know what I'm saying? You had Trump talking about, I'm about to, I'm about to get up out of Syria. You know what I'm saying? I don't need, we don't need to be in that war mission accomplished. We're about to remove ourselves. Suddenly, right after that, this, and this is what the Syrian president want. The Syrian president want Americans and everybody else to get out of his land. Let him handle his conflict. That's what he wants. He's he been saying it for the longest, right? Trump, like, I get in office right when he got in office. He said, I get in office, we getting up out of there, right? So he say that nationally. He say that on TV or whatever. He said that on Twitter, whatever he said it. And then right afterwards, they say the Syrian president gassed his own people with poison gas. And after that, Trump was like, everybody started pressuring him saying, we got to do something about that. So Trump sent missiles over there. So it's like, let's think about it. This whole time, no gas was being used. But right when Trump said he about to get out, for some reason he decided to gas his people, it's a setup. He's sitting there telling him, no, nah, I ain't do that stuff. He's there telling him, he go, he doing interviews here talking about, I ain't do that stuff. You know what I'm saying? I don't know who did it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't do that stuff. Who who got the proof? He asked, who got the proof that I did it? How you how I do it? If I did it, how before any American or anybody came over there to check it out, y'all already sent the missiles. Y'all know I did it though, huh? He's like, all right, for sure. So now a year later, same thing happened. Trump tweeted, I'm about to get up out of Syria. Next thing you know, he gasses people again. This stuff is just way too obvious to me. The man just looking, he looking like, I ain't do this stuff. Russia getting mad. Russia talking big stuff. If y'all send a missile this time, after the guy, he's like, y'all send a missile this time, we send it back. 
Trump still sent them they, they ain't sent nothing back. You know what I'm saying? Not that it was not that we know of at least. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Trump sent them things over there, blew up some stuff. You know what I'm saying? The whole time they looking like that stuff is a hoax. You got people mad this time though. This time they exposed them to you got all types of people on videos like look, now this is what really happened. They went over there, a European uh, uh, reporter went over there and started interviewing the doctors that, that supposedly took care of them. They're like, no, nah, it wasn't no chemical that we treated them for. It was smoke inhalation. Somebody bombed them. You know what I'm saying? Then they're like, you know what I'm saying? This group start walking around, start yelling, chemical attack, chemical attack, in their language, of course. You know what I'm saying? And made everybody think that and had a video going while they're doing it. It's a setup. You know what I'm saying? It's a setup. You got the powers that be. Why? You know, people ask, why would it be a setup? A lot of money made off of war. A lot of money made off of, I mean, not only can I do it, so if I'm a company, right, I'm my own independent company, and I sell America weapons, then at the same time, the places that America is bombing, I'm selling them weapons. And then the places next to them, I'm like, well, you never, you know, you never know. It's between America and Syria right now, or the America and the, the rebels in Syria right now. But, you know what I'm saying, you never know what could spill out and happen. So since y'all around this area, I might need to sell y'all some weapons too. So I'm making a lot of money. As soon as the conflict, as soon as everything calm, nobody want to buy no weapons. You know what I'm saying? So it's like let's keep let's keep the the, the, the conflict going. You know what I'm saying? Start selling weapons, selling weapons. And so them same people that sell weapons also buy politicians. So if you buy enough politicians, you can pull some strings. Let's uh let's uh let's try to make something happen over there in Syria. All right, all the connections to the CIA and the people that they call rebels over there, ISIS, there's still connections there. A lot of connections there. We got documents that show that that the CIA wanted ISIS to happen. And suddenly it happened. Before ISIS happened, they wanted it to happen. And they called it Islamic State. It's like there needs to be an Islamic State, in other words, an Islamic country that takes over Syria and uh, things of what they call Levant region, you know what I'm saying, the places around Israel. They got that thing in a document. It wasn't supposed to get released. It got released. That thing hit it. Nobody call it fake. Everybody said that thing real, even the CIA. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, okay, they said it. They said they wanted to have it before ISIS happened. And suddenly, ISIS happened by the same name. That's crazy. They just called it Islamic State. Then you got a group that comes to call itself the Islamic State. In Syria. ISIS. That's crazy. Everybody looking like, oh, well, we don't know what's going on here. Whole thing is just wide open, exposed, and everybody act like they don't know. Everybody, act, these people capable of some crazy stuff. Let me tell you something. Most high God got something for their butt. Most high God got something for their butt. You know what I'm saying? All we gotta do is stay patient. You know what I'm saying? Let this thing keep keep going. These people keep on meddling in all these people countries. Somebody gonna expose that stuff even more so than they already have, and somebody gonna get some butt. You know what I'm saying? Most high God gonna let it happen. That's his will. Then he gonna get us up out of here one of these. I'm saying we just got to be patient. Any question? Let's pray out.